Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. This week, I'm continuing with my AP Art History series with the conclusion of Unit 2. These videos have taken us across the ancient Mediterranean, and today's wrap-up will be the final three images from ancient Rome. They represent some of the most famous monuments of the city, so to learn more, keep on watching. The first image of this video is the magnificent form of Trajan. Built during the reign of the Emperor Trajan, it was intended to be a great public space for the people of Rome, sometimes being referred to as the world's first major shopping center. But to truly understand this space, we must first understand the life of Trajan. He was born in 53 CE in Italica, Hispania, modern-day Spain. Trajan came from a non-aristocratic family, but was able to rise through the ranks of the military because his father was a senator. Eventually, he made his way to Rome and caught the eye of the imperial family. Trajan was adopted by the Emperor Nerva, who named him as his successor. He ruled from 98 to 117 CE and is considered one of the five good emperors of Roman history. Trajan is best known for his military campaigns and for expanding the Roman Empire to its greatest territorial extent. By the end of his reign, the mighty empire stretched from modern-day Britain in the north, Portugal in the west, Egypt in the south, and Mesopotamia in the east. His most famous campaign occurred when he conquered Dacia, which is modern-day Romania, and he also led successful campaigns, capturing territories in Armenia and Mesopotamia. During his reign, Trajan initiated various public works projects, including the construction of Trajan's Forum and Trajan's Column, which are the focus of the APR history test. But he also built Trajan's Bridge across the Danube River, which was the longest arch bridge in both total and span length for more than a thousand years. Trajan was also renowned for his public welfare programs, which included providing help for orphans and impoverished children. Trajan's death in 117 CE marks the end of an era. He was succeeded by his adopted son, Hadrian, who focused more on arts and culture than military exploits. Trajan left a legacy as a military leader, an able administrator, and patron of the arts and infrastructure. He contributed significantly to prosperity and expansion of the Roman Empire. The people loved Trajan so much that they gave him the title of first citizen, and he was deified after his death. Now that we have some information about Trajan, let's take a look at his forum. It was a grand architectural complex commissioned by the emperor to celebrate his victories in Dacia. Construction began around 107 CE and was completed in 113. The forum was a sprawling area that included various buildings and structures. At its center stood Trajan's Column, a remarkable monument that commemorated his campaign. I'll discuss this a little bit later. Adjacent to the column was the Basilica Uplia, an enormous civic building that served as the courthouse and meeting place for Rome. It got its name from Trajan's family name, reminding the people of Rome who had commissioned it. As traditional, the basilica had a central nave flanked by aisles and was adorned with impressive marble columns and intricate designs. Behind the basilica was a temple of Trajan, dedicated to the deified emperor and his wife Plutonia, although much of the structure has been lost over time. Remember, it wasn't uncommon for emperors and their families to be elevated to the level of gods after their death. Surrounding the forum were various other buildings, like libraries and administrative offices. There was also a shopping center, which some historians lightheartedly refer to as the world's first mall. The entire complex has served as a hub of political, administrative, and cultural activity in the ancient city. Today, while much of the original structure have been lost or repurposed, visitors can still see parts of it in Rome, including Trajan's Column and parts of the Basilica. As promised, it's time to discuss the magnificent Trajan's Column. Firstly, I highly recommend checking out the National Geographic website I have listed in the sources. Their team scanned and animated all scenes of the column, allowing the public to view and learn about it. It's a fantastic resource and fun to play around with. As I mentioned before, Trajan commissioned this column to celebrate his victory of over the Dacians, a group found in modern-day Romania. It's a towering structure reaching a height of about 98 feet. Crafted from 20 colossal Carrera marble drums, it stands as a cylindrical pillar adorned with continuous and intricate spiral reliefs that wind from the exterior from the base to the capital. Many art historians, including myself, like to compare it to an ancient comic strip. The spiral frieze spans approximately 650 feet or 200 meters and depicts scenes from Trajan's two military campaigns. Carved in low relief, they are detailed and meticulously crafted to show different aspects of military life, including battles, marching, engineering, and more. It's a valuable resource for understanding how Rome and its military were able to conquer much of the Western world. Atop the column once stood a statue of Trajan, but it was replaced in the Middle Ages with a statue of St. Peter. The original statue, sadly, has been lost to history. The next required image on the list is one of the most famous buildings in ancient Rome. Located in the heart of the city, it was originally built by Marcus Agrippa during the reign of Augustus, the first Roman emperor. The Pantheon was later rebuilt by Emperor Hadrian around 126 CE after the original structure was damaged by a massive fire. The most distinctive feature of the Pantheon is its massive domed roof, 
which is honestly an engineering marvel even today. It remains one of the largest unreinforced concrete domes in the world, nearly 2,000 years after its construction. The dome's design includes a series of progressively lighter concrete rings, reducing the weight of the structure without compromising strength. The oculus, which is a large circular opening in the center of the dome, also helps reduce the weight, but it also allows natural light to stream into the building. It also allows rain, but the floor was cleverly constructed to have a slight slope to allow the water to enter a drain at the center of the room. The Pantheon was dedicated as a temple to all of the gods of ancient Rome, which is where it means originates. Pan means all and Theos means god. The interior of the space would have once been filled with statues of various gods and goddesses, including deified emperors. Throughout the centuries, the Pantheon has served various purposes, including as a Christian church dedicated to Saint Mary and the Martyrs, which contribute to its preservation and is what the church is still dedicated to today. The Pantheon stands as a symbol of ingenuity and skill of Roman engineering and remains a marvel of classic architecture. I can't believe we're finally here, but it's time to talk about the final image of Unit 2. Dating from the Middle Empire period, 250 to 260 CE, this marble sarcophagus is covered in an emotional, dramatic relief sculpture. It's called the Ludovisi Battle Sarcophagus, and it was discovered in Rome near the Porta Tibertina in the gardens of the Villa Ludovisi in the 17th century. The sarcophagus is renowned for its intricate and detailed carvings. It's chaotic and involves Roman soldiers, barbarian warriors, likely the Goths, and a variety of military equipment. The figures are depicted in dynamic poses, capturing just how intense battles were in ancient Roman times. The relief portrays a narrative of combat, with soldiers engaged in fierce hand-to-hand -hand battle, wielding weapons like swords, shields, and spears. The scene is filled with movement, with horses rearing, soldiers falling, and a sense of action and urgency depicted throughout the composition. What makes the Ludovisi battle sarcophagus significant is not just its artistic quality, but the depth of detail the diversity of characters that are represented, and the portrayal of military tactics. It provides insight into the Roman military at the time. Scholars have debated its specific historical event, or is it a mythological battle that the sarcophagus represents? Some theories suggest it might be a scene from the Trojan War or a historical battle between the Romans and the Goths. Today, the Ludovisi Battle Sarcophagus is housed in the Palazzo Atems, a section of the National Roman Museum, where visitors can admire the detailed carvings and appreciate the artistry of ancient Roman sculptures. Well, that's a wrap on Unit 2. It's taken us a while to get through, but we did have to cover a lot of history. Next up is Unit 3, which covers early Europe and colonial Americas from 200 to 1750 CE. Keep an eye out for that series of videos coming soon.